I want to draw a picture for you. You're at the airport, and you've gotten off of your airplane, and you're, you're down where the luggage is, and the carousel's going around, and it's happened again. You lost your luggage. You know that feeling? It starts about right in here somewhere, and you're like, oh no, what was in my suitcase that I need? But usually the good news is eventually the airline gets you reunited with your suitcase, maybe that afternoon, maybe just as you're getting ready to come back home uh, uh, three weeks later, but eventually you are reunited with your luggage. See, losing luggage can be one of life's most annoying inconveniences. Would you agree with me? It can be annoying. And, and those savvy travelers, those who are traveling a lot of, uh, from day to day and week to week, have basically have kind of gotten a little bit clever on the whole situation and realized that the best thing to do is to, to take a carry-on. Or if you have to check some baggage, maybe your carry-on's going to have the essentials, everything from your critical papers, medications, to your undergarments of all things. But metaphorically and spiritually speaking, we should all maybe make a conscious effort, uh, an exerted effort to, to lose our luggage. It's okay to lose our luggage from a, a spiritual perspective. Most of us all are, are far more bogged down with baggage than we may even realize. For example, how many extra pounds of grudges are you packing around? How many handbags of animosity? How many flight bags of resentment? How many roller bags of revenge? You know, many of us feel compelled to make these New Year's resolutions that ultimately carry us into the new year, but few of us stop and to consider the load that we already are carrying, the one that we've packed and allows us to be ready to go into the new year. You see, the worst thing that we can do is to to take these bags that are bursting with grudges, those unforgiven acts, those attitudes that just seem to be the natural things we want to carry along with us. So let's lose the luggage. Let's lose the luggage. Besides, if, if one of your resolutions is that ever so popular commitment to losing weight, what better way than to have those few... Uh, unsightly bumps or, or bulges uh, seem to go away as we carry them with us. Paul urges the Christians in Colossia to put to death those old attitudes, those agendas that we have, to, to take on some new attitudes, to, to clothe oneself with things like compassion or kindness or patience or love. See, the result is to forgive each other just as we have been forgiven, Paul urges us. See, this call to forgiveness, as Paul declares, is not really a, an optional request. Forgiveness just isn't something that Christians should extend to one another because it's the, the nice thing to do. Maybe it'll promote some peace in the body of Christ. See, Paul makes the connection between divine forgiveness and the human act of forgiveness. He makes them a little bit more explicit as he insists that as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. You see, forgiveness isn't something that everyone owes each other. And forgiveness is not something that we can truly offer each other. You see, we have the capacity for forgiveness only because God has first forgiven us. To forgive really is an act of worship. God knows that uh, as imperfect human beings, it's hard for us to, to let go of those carefully guarded, well-worn bags of resentments and old hurts. Each of us has names and faces of individuals who simply we can't imagine forgiving or forgetting about, and we just want to hold some form of a grudge toward this person. So maybe we can do away with our grudges. Maybe we can depend upon God to, to take this sort of baggage from our lives and, and send it away forever. Otherwise, we wind up holding on to a grudge whether it be with ourselves or with another person. 
And where does a grudge really get you in the first place? It would seem that holding a grudge only complicates matters even more. Holding a grudge can get in the way of allowing us to be the person that God would want us to be, which is forgiven and free. During the month of January, we talked about offering ourselves some challenges that hopefully bring us into a better alignment of understanding ourselves a little bit more clearly in our faith. You could say we want to take on an attitude that we're going to have four-eyed faith. That with an extra set of lenses, maybe we can just get along a little bit farther in our faith. Be strengthened as the body of Christ and be the person that God sees in us. Last week's challenge was to make a commitment to forget our failures. To forgive ourselves for those mistakes and those mishaps in our lives just as God in Jesus has forgiven us. That accepting God's forgiveness invites us then to forgive ourselves. See, this morning then takes into account a second commitment for the new year. And for us, that's to to gain some further clarity in our lives. But last week, as we committed to forget our failures, this week we want to commit ourselves to give up our grudges. Wait a minute, David. Yes. Commit yourself to give up your grudges. We read the words from Paul this morning as it's attributed to his conversation with some early Christians in Colossae. He says, If anyone has a complaint against you, Go kick his butt. No. Are you listening? If anyone has a complaint against one another, forgive just as the Lord has forgiven you. Above all, clothe yourselves with love. There's that four-letter word again. It's that word love. If we love others as we ought to, then by no means should we have a grudge towards someone Or if you do have a grudge, get over it quickly. Get over it quickly and completely because God surely has with you. You know, if God kept grudges, there'd be a lot of lightning striking around here, wouldn't there? I'd probably be the first to go. You see, the problem with being a Christian, the whole problem with being a Christian is it's such a daily thing. It's that darn old make the rest of your week like Sunday stuff. So let's unpack this a little then. You know, what is a grudge? You know, what is it that seems to hinder us from connecting with our neighbors, with ourselves, as the body of Christ before the world? Well, they say a grudge is some form of deep, ongoing resentment that we cultivate in our hearts against someone else. But that's only a beginning. A grudge is is that unforgiving spirit that leads to those unforgiving attitudes and those unforgiving actions. When we put all of this together, we can easily figure out our dilemma. Harboring a grudge is about nursing a dislike for someone. You see, what we need to know is that grudges are dangerous because they are destructive. In short, grudges make up for grave mistakes. Grudges destroy families. Grudges destroy marriages. They ruin friendships. Grudges split churches. One of the greatest scandals is the grudge that Christians can hold against one another. When I first got out of seminary, I was pointed to a church, and and I had a ministry for a couple years of dealing with grudges. There was a church split. I got to serve the church that that was the remnant that was left and and had to deal with the bumps and bruises of of another church that uh, decided to go off and do their own thing. It all hindered on this notion that there was people who had gone off onto a weekend retreat for spiritual renewal. Great opportunity for for leadership within the life of the church. 
But when they came back from this leadership weekend, this training of how to be a disciple for Jesus, they began holding out to other people in the church that, hey, I'm better than you are because I've gone on this retreat. And if you want to be like me, you should go on this as well. No, you will go on this retreat. A grudge started to fester. And eventually they tore each other apart because a little something got in the way. I don't talk about sin a whole lot, but pride got in the way of this congregation. And you know, sin isn't just those bad things we do. Sin really is that, that turning away from God and turning away from others. This congregation had turned away from one another, and I think in the same time, they were turning away from the God that they once had celebrated. You see, holding a grudge over someone most of the time has to do about pride. That, it's that whole idea that mine is bigger and better than yours notion. Well, I can't say I fixed the whole picture while I was there. That would be another element of pride that much of us clergy kind of get sucked into ourselves. But they're doing better. They were better when I left, and they've had some better pastors than I over the years to follow. And it's taken that much time for them to realize that together or apart, they can experience the, the transforming love of Jesus Christ and that they can grow as well. So our challenge today is to give up our grudges. Today, if you are holding on to a grudge against someone, then God truly just wants to say to you, give it up. You see, grudges aren't just destructive for other people. They're self-destructive too. When you hold a grudge against someone, you, you hurt yourself just as much as perhaps, if not more, than the next person. Make no mistake about it. If you're harboring a grudge, then it'll eventually destroy you. If not physically, spiritually, and definitely emotionally. It'll make you a bitter and twisted person. The book of Job in chapter 21 describes people who have no happiness at all. They live and die with bitter hearts. Do you really want that to be your epitaph? Someone who's bitter? So set yourself free. Give up your grudges. Forgive each other whatever those grievances that you may have toward another person. Place your hearts in, into the hands of the one who forgives and then offer that heart to the person you need to forgive or to ungrudge as that princess of the snow sings, let it go. According to what we read then from this morning's passage is the way to give up a grudge is to forgive a grievance. This passage makes no reference to ignore whatever the person has done to you. This passage makes no plea to, to pretend it did happen, nor does the passage condone it to pretend it didn't matter. Even today, we're encouraged as followers of Jesus to, to forgive grievances of other people and even our own. It means to acknowledge how wrong and painful what has been done to us and, and maybe acknowledging what we've done unto others. You see, I'm absolutely certain that there are people here who need to, to give up their grudges, to forgive the grievance they have against someone else. Just as last week, as we talked about forgiving our mistakes and our failures that we made in life, grudges are something to give up. And letting go of a grudge is a whole lot easier to accomplish when we forgive ourselves by forgiving and forgetting our failures. Now I can probably count on one hand how many times I've stood up here on a Sunday and said, you need to do this or you've done this. But I think grudges are things that point fingers back to us. So it's worth talking about and to say we need to give up our grudges. We need to forgive those grievances that we have against folks like our, our parents, what they've done to us or what they didn't do to us. 
what our children have done to us or what they haven't done to us. Some of you need to forgive a partner for some emotional or physical abuse. Some of us need to give up that grudge that we have against someone at work because they made us feel the way they did or threatened us. Some of us need to give up that grudge that stems from an argument we had with someone. Some of us probably need to give up grudges that we have against other people in our church. You see, I believe what we hear is that deep-seated resentment that we have against another person has to go. And what better time to to make that difficult decision about forgiveness uh, than at the start of the new year? What better way to make those commitments of forgetting our failures and, and giving up our grudges to get that clearer vision than at the first of the year? Don't tell God you can't forgive. You see, when we tell God we can't forgive, then that really is saying that I won't forgive. If Jesus can forgive you, surely you can give up your grievance at whatever cost. The question is, will you do it? So let me end with this. Pastors have grudges too. And it's that grudge that haunts us because it's a grudge that we have with ourselves. At least that's my excuse. See, the grudge often comes after we've moved to another church to begin a new chapter in our ministry, and we kick ourselves where we probably need to be kicked in the first place, and we say, why didn't I do what God was calling and challenged me to do to lead in the first place? You see, I don't want that to be the case for us some year, where we look at each other and say, why didn't we go this direction? You see, our challenge and call is to begin living and serving like we just had one year to make a difference. And if we did that, we might be surprised what we can do. You know, boilers are nice, but we'll get there when we get there. Transforming lives is our priority. And living faith and loving life is what we're called to do. So you let me worry about the boiler. And let's journey together as we share the surprising love and life that we have that we can transform. You see, it's not waiting for for something to happen. It's about being the something that happens. See, we can sit around and wait for things to fall off the ceiling and hit us in the head. But let's be the something that happens in our community and in the world. As we forgive ourselves and let go of our grudges, we discover how the daily thing of being a follower of Jesus is not so much about me or you. It is about God. And it's maybe about the person who needs to know about God in their own special way. So, with eyes to see, with ears to hear, let us be attentive to what the Spirit reveals to us today, maybe to let it go, or at least to start toward that. Let the church sing. Amen, 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 amen. I want to invite